In a shocker, WWE released Mandy Rose this week after she dropped the NXT Women's Championship to Roxanne Perez on Tuesday's show, ending a 413-day run with the title that she won from Raquel Gonzalez back when she was still Gonzalez on last year's Halloween Havoc show. Now, I figured she would be dropping the title to Roxanne because they just had uh, their first two Iron Survivor matches and they would want at least one of the winners to go on to win the championship. And I don't see Braun Breaker losing his title to Grayson Waller. So I figured Mandy was going to be the uh, the fall girl here. But I was surprised they rushed into it so quickly. I figured they would hold off until, you know, at least New Year's Evil uh, or maybe even the uh, the show they're doing on the road. I think it's in Charlotte in February. But then I heard that she was released, and it all made sense. Per The Observer, Matt Bloom informed Shawn Michaels about content that Mandy was posting on her FanTime subscription service, uh, which is something that I didn't even know existed until this week, but evidently it's very similar to OnlyFans. The stuff that she was posting had gotten a lot more racy of late, at which point Michaels had Tuesday's show completely rewritten to have her drop the championship to Roxanne. When I heard this, I was stunned because they have pushed Mandy, uh, Mandy Moore, Mandy Rose uh, to the moon as the NXT Women's Champion now for over a year. And it seemed like Toxic Attraction was poised for a main roster debut very soon, probably after Mandy dropped the belt. And for them to just fire her like that instead of suspending her just didn't make sense to me. Until I started to see and hear things about the actual content that she was posting on her page. Once I started, you know, hearing about what it was, then it made more sense to me why they would want to get rid of her or or distance themselves from her as quickly as possible. Because we're not just talking skimpy bikini photos here. You know, people are getting very outraged over this and starting the free Mandy hashtags, I think, on uh, social media without actually knowing what she was posting. To be perfectly honest with you, I am shocked that she got away with it as long as she did, unless she only recently started posting more racy stuff. And if she violated the terms of her contract by posting the content that she did, then she violated her contract. You know, this is very different than other talents that have had spicy photos and videos of theirs get leaked. In those cases, they weren't selling those things on their own personal website. Those were personal photos and videos that were stolen from them and were leaked on the internet. In this case, one of her paying customers, at least one of her paying customers, was leaking this stuff on the internet. It was behind a paywall, and they basically just leaked it for everybody to see. But they saw it because she was selling the content herself. So that is not exactly the same thing. This decision had nothing to do with WWE being the morality police. This had nothing to do with Mandy Rose casting the company in a bad light. It has everything to do with dollars and cents, which is all this company cares about. Mandy might be making a fortune off this stuff, but WWE is not. (laughs) So don't think that they're not bothered by that. Uh, I'm sure that didn't sit too well with them. But more than that, they have their sponsors. They have a very lucrative, very important deal with Mattel, the biggest toy manufacturer in the world. That is what this is ultimately about. Melter says that she was blindsided by the news. Do I think a conversation should have been had first? Yes, absolutely. And I assume there was a conversation. At least, at least one At some point between WWE and Mandy Rose, there's no way that they did not know about her having this fan page. They absolutely knew about it. I think a suspension would have made sense, but I have to assume these things were already brought up. And if so, and if she made it clear that she was not taking the site down or toning down the content because she's making so much money from it, she may have drawn a line in the sand. If that's the case, then I don't blame WWE for doing what they did. I don't see this as a hero and a devil situation where the good guy is Mandy Rose and the bad guy is WWE. WWE is very good at being the bad guy. God knows they played that role plenty of times before. Just based on what we know so far, which is not everything, I don't think that this is one of those times. Apparently Mandy is making a fortune from that website. I read in one place that she might be she might be raking in more money from her own website than she does from her WWE contract. I believe it. There's a lot of people making a lot of money on on sites like OnlyFans. There are Instagram influencers who make a full-time living just by posting on Instagram. Millions of followers. So I can believe it. 
If WWE and Mandy had a conversation about the page previously and she stood her ground and she refused to change it or take it down, even if it meant costing her her job, then good for her. I think that's to be respected. But knowing what she was posting, I can completely understand WWE wanting to distance themselves from it. Now, we're not talking hardcore porn here, but we're also not talking you know, skimpy photos. I can understand WWE saying, you know, we, we can't, you know, work together anymore. Especially if Mattel or one of their partners came to them and said, hey, we have a problem here. You know, Mandy Rose is not bigger than Mattel. It comes down to dollars and cents. It makes sense for her to trade taking bumps for taking raunchy photos and videos if she can make more money doing that. And if WWE thinks that this is going to potentially cost them business, then it makes sense for them to sever their ties with her. Now, the Observer report said the belief is that she was fired without being given the option to take the stuff down and tone down her site. I find that hard to believe. With all that they have invested in her, that Shawn Michaels would not have called her into the principal's office first to ask her about this. I said this with the CM Punk stuff, with the Elite. If people would just communicate with each other, 95% of these situations could be avoided. I just cannot wrap my head around the visual of Lord Tenzai racing into Shawn Michaels' office at the PC, winded and out of breath with his fucking iPad to show him these Mandy Rose photos that they supposedly knew nothing about. And that, without talking to her about it first, they would have rebooked their entire show to take the title off her and then fired her, all without having a conversation. Or without asking her to take the site down first. If that's what happened here, she still may have violated the terms of her contract, but that would be pretty fucking stupid if that's how this all went down. Now, Fightful says that Mandy knew WWE did not want her posting this kind of stuff and that it could possibly get her in trouble, and she did it anyway. I think when people first started leaking her content, she went on social media and she tried to squash it before it turned into a big story, so she knew. It wasn't just, you know, hey, that's, you know, paywall content, you can't be doing that. It was like, you guys got to take that shit down because, you know, I could get in some hot water here. She knew that it was a risk. And also, we don't know how many chances WWE may have given her if they did talk to her about this before. Now we're getting conflicting reports, right, about whether or not they actually spoke to her or not. If they did, we don't know how many times they had a conversation about this or who she talked to. Which is why I'm not going to jump down their throats for this until we know more. I think she knew the risks. I think she decided it was worth it to keep doing it. And she got burned. She took a risk and it didn't pay off, right? That's what happens when you take risks in life sometimes. <laughs> you take a risk and sometimes it comes back to bite you on the ass. She took a risk and, and look, we could get into the whole, oh, I thought she was an independent contractor and all that. Yes, we know the independent contractor stuff is a farce. I've spoken about this many, many times over the years. I don't feel like rehashing it again. We know it's bullshit. Is there a double standard when it comes to other talent who get into trouble and don't get fired? Yes. <laughs> yes. I know that's hard to believe, but yes, there is a double standard in pro wrestling. And I'm not even talking just like a male-female thing. I'm talking if you are a big star, you are going to get more chances to fail than someone who is not as big of a star. That has always been the case. For the people who cited Jimmy Uso to me and his countless DUIs and how he's never been fired or Matt Riddle, who I'm going to talk about in a bit, allegedly being popped for a second drug violation and being sent to rehab, how come he wasn't fired, right? All this stuff. Because WWE has policies in place for a lot of these things. The DUI stuff, there really, there's no excuse for the DUI stuff. And if Jimmy Uso was not cousins with Roman Reigns, he would not have been so lucky. I don't think, after his fifth or sixth DUI. But if Riddle failed the drug test after a second time, I think the policy states that the company mandates a trip to rehab. And if the talent refuses, then they have the right to terminate them. That's what happened uh, years ago with Umaga, and I think even before that with Jeff Hardy. You may disagree with their policies and say that it's unfair, but they nonetheless still do have policies for some of this stuff. The way they, you know, that they treat the Matt Riddle situation is going to be different than how they treat the Mandy Rose situation because of that. Now, Fightful says that she had two years left on her contract. It was a main roster contract she was working on because she was on the main roster and got sent down to NXT in 2021, uh, where she formed Toxic Attraction. 
So she's likely bound by the standard 90-day non-compete instead of the 30 days that usually applies to the NXT deals. I honestly don't think that we have seen the last of Mandy Rose in WWE. I think that they're going to bring her back next year at some point if she wants to come back. Maybe she won't want to. Maybe she's perfectly content to keep doing what she's doing. And I have no problem with her doing that. More power to her. I think that's great. It's a great feeling to be self-employed. But if she wants to wrestle, there's obviously a uh, AEW, there's Impact, but I I mean, you know, if it's true that she was making more doing her own site than she was off her WWE deal, there ain't no way Impact is shelling out that kind of money for Mandy Rose. I could see her in AEW, but I think they end up working something out. I think she eventually returns to WWE. The ones I feel bad for, I, I don't really, I don't feel bad for Mandy Rose. The one I feel bad for more than anything are G.G. Dolan and J.C. Jane. Because through no fault of their own, they had a good thing going with Toxic Attraction. And now that's dead. I hope that doesn't screw up their chances of a main roster call-up. You know, they can still stay together as a tag team. But without Mandy, it won't be the same. It kind of fucks them over in a way. And that's not their fault. They didn't do anything wrong. But Roxanne Perez is the new NXT Women's Champion. I expected it, just not this soon. But it's just like I mapped out before NXT deadline. Roxanne was going to win the Iron Survivor Challenge. I said that she was going to end Mandy's reign then as the champion. And when the time comes, she's going to drop that NXT Women's Championship to Tiffany Stratton. 